Check one, two, check. Hey, check. Hey, hey, hope everybody's doing great. It's June 20th, and we're going to do our Blaise Pascal reading time on Saturday. Hope you guys are well. And uh, two scriptures I'm going to read. One of them is from the book of Matthew, um, chapter 16. Simon Peter answers, um, let's see, uh, verse 13. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do the people say the Son of Man is? <clears throat> and that's all I'm going to read on that one, Matthew 16. So who do you say that I am? Big question, right? Even Jesus asked people, hey, who do you think I am? And then the next one is the book of Ecclesiastes. Uh, this says, not only was the teacher wise, but he also imparted knowledge to the people. And he pondered and searched out and set in order many proverbs. And it says in verse 11, or, uh, uh, to, or verse 12, Be warned, my son, of any ad additions to them, of making many books, there is no end, and much study wearies the body. Now all has been heard. Here is the conclusion of the matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the duty of all mankind. For God will bring every deed into judgment, including every hidden thing, whether it is good or or evil and so that is a great book Ecclesiastes and I love how he tells us to ponder and then he comes to a conclusion of the matter and we are in a section of uh, Blaise Pascal's writing against indifference so against indifference to uh, religion, but he's speaking uh, specifically uh, indifference to Christianity. So we're going to jump right in. Now, I kind of said this already before, read this little part, but I'm going to read it again so it jumps right into where we're at or where we're going. Before going into the proofs of the Christian religion, I find it necessary to point out how wrong are those men who live unconcerned to seek the truth about something of such importance to them and affecting them so closely. Okay, so what he's talking about is he finds it necessary to point out how wrong are those people who live unconcerned to seek the truth about something of such importance. Now he's talking about after death, life after death. I think of an Iron Maiden album. Of all their aberrations, it is no doubt this which most convicts them of folly and blindness and where they can most easily be confounded by the first application of common sense and by natural instincts. For it is indubitable indu that this life is but an instant of time, that the state of death is eternal. So that's true. Time goes by pretty quick, don't it? And whatever its nature is, so he says, death is eternal no matter what state it's in. Whatever its nature may be, and thus that all of our actions and thoughts must follow such different paths according to the state of this eternity. So what Blaze is getting at in that section, that he says it's indubitable that this life is but for an instant, that the state of death is eternal, whatever its nature may be, and thus that all of our actions and thoughts must follow such different paths according to the state of this eternity. Okay, so he's saying, hey, something is for sure, and so we need to base things off of that surety. And so, what's up, Shane? And it says that the only possible way of acting with sense and judgment is to decide our course in the light of this point which ought to be our ultimate objective so the ultimate objective right the ultimate goal the ultimate striving it says is that we must act with sense and judgment 
according to that state of that eternity. So that that's kind of having like a mind that's focused on something that's for sure going to come up. I know a lot of people don't like to think of death and they don't like to think of what happens when you die and some people and that's what that's what Pascal is trying to address is how important that is. Now in Pascal's day, he saw that many people just refused to think about that or they maybe didn't want to or they just kind of fluffed it off like it wasn't that big of a deal like oh yeah I'm just going to die one day and that's how it's going to go and so he's going to express his feelings on that so but it's it's called our ultimate objection our, our objective eternal life yeah thinking about that so if there's such a thing as eternal life then boy that's something I should probably ponder a little bit and so he makes the point that death is eternal no matter what state it's in. So even if you say, hey, I don't believe in God or anything, well, guess what? Death is eternal no matter what state it's in. <laughs> so, so it doesn't matter if you believe in God or you believe in God. Death is eternal no matter what state. He's saying when you die, you die. That's it. It's, he, he, I guess eternity starts then, uh, no matter what state it's in. So there is nothing more obvious than this, he says. And it follows according to rational principles, meaning the rational thought now would be that people are behaving quite reason reasonably if they do not choose another path. Okay? So there's nothing more obvious than the death that's going to take place. And it follows according to rational principles, makes logical sense that mankind are behaving quite reason reasonably if they do not choose another p path. Meaning, there is no other path. We're only going to be going down this way of death. So it's reasonable to, to choose it. To go, yes, I'm going that way. Let us then judge on the, that score those who live without a thought for the final end of, ra of life drifting wherever their inclinations and ple pleasures may take them without reflection or anxiety, as if they could annihilate eternity by keeping their minds off it, concerned solely with the attaining instant happiness. So Pascal talks about being rational and being irrational. Is it rational to avoid something that will happen? Or is it irrational to avoid pondering and thinking through something that is sure to happen? No doubt that it's going to happen. And so Pascal says it would be irrational. It wouldn't follow rational principles, logical principles of thinking if we were to ignore such a important jump to come so to speak that wouldn't make sense it would make more pr rational sense to ponder something of such surety so he says um, that people will drift wherever their inclinations and pleasures may take them so think of what what are those things that take your mind off of that idea of eternity? It might be uh, it might be money, right? It might be what kind of things you like to do in life, hobbies. Um, you know, you can name your thing, right? Um, people can get so into anything. We we as human beings can find so many. Uh, what he calls distractions, right? Uh, ways that we can annihilate eternity. I like how he puts that. Ways that human beings can annihilate it. We do it through drug use, right? We do it through our relationships and intimacy. We can annihilate the idea of eternity. We can do it through um, even our own philosophies, our own uh, uh, mind thinking 
we can do it through so that's like the pursuit of education we can do it through all kinds of ways so um, he says that uh, we drift that's what we do so we drift wherever our inclinations and pleasures may take us okay without reflection either he says so we're without reflection or anxiety meaning we don't even have a thought of it we just move away from the thoughts of dwelling or pondering something so sure as our eternal state as if we as human beings could annihilate eternity by keeping their minds off it concerned solely with attaining instant happiness however eternity exists and no matter what state it's in he's saying so he's not saying what state eternity is in according to his belief at the moment he's just saying eternity is uh, that death will happen and then whatever is the state of you from that point on w is a sure thing so he says however eternity exists in death which must begin which must begin it and which threatens at every moment must infallibly face them with the inescapable and appalling alternative of being either eternally annihilated or wretched without their knowing which of these two forms of eternity stands ready to meet them forever so they they maybe don't ponder much of this eternity where they have uh, they are threatened by that every moment and what that basically means is that every moment of course we could die so every moment there is a um, a threatening to life and if that's true, where at any, every moment something could change in a snap, then then those that don't want to think about it or don't ponder it or don't think about eternal things or heavenly things or eternal thing, you know, things of that nature, um, it says it's inescapable. Uh, these two ideas that either they are going to be eternally annihilated or wretched, and so meaning you're not going to have a great eternal life or you're just going to be annihilated and you don't really think about that so without their no knowing which of these two forms of eternity stands ready to meet them forever so he sees the skeptic of his day and he says hey if you've turned away from from christ or you turned away from from faith he he says hey well it, wouldn't it be reasonable for <clears throat> for you to really ponder uh, something uh, that's so sure as death and 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 then uh, if death is looming and and then whatever happens happens after that <clears throat> and you must face an uh, inescapable he says alternative of being either eternally annihilated or wretched if there is even a possibility of those things I mean shouldn't you look into it a little bit more that's what he's getting at right shouldn't you look at the the teachings of the church in his day like that's what pascal would see like wouldn't you want to study wouldn't you want to learn wouldn't you want to delve into now this is totally how it worked for me you know bo didn't grow up in uh, uh you know no uh, some christian home um for those of you who know my story it, it's not like that at all um and um but what 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 did happen was conversations that I had with people uh in high school, especially when I was studying guitar up in Montana State University during a, a short uh, few week period of time when I was in high school, I took a trip uh, to Montana State University to study with a uh, guitar player up there and um, and he he shared his faith which uh, me and Johnny Carson's son sat in the back and kind of mocked it. But, um, uh, like, I didn't uh, under... I didn't know what was really being said, but but it definitely um, had its impact on me in that it made me think of what Pascal's talking about, kind of eternity. What happens when you die? And, and that thought kind of always would creep in my brain. 
and I started pondering as Pascal st- says uh, eternity right and death and which must begin which must begin it meaning etern- death must begin eternity so I started dwelling on that and then there was this inescapable and appalling alternative of being either eternally annihilated or wretched then the idea of going okay okay maybe I just cease to exist and that's it and then I would ponder that but anyway uh, it led me into reading and uh, and and studying and thinking through things and uh, listening to different people and uh, and kind of uh, the gamut of ideas and thoughts and so when it came to time for me to look into the Bible I didn't just want to do that haphazardly uh, as uh, I saw so many do. Uh, uh, around me uh, or just blow it off I wanted to take time to read it and that's what Pascal is going to get into is taking the time so he says the consequences are undeniably terrible this annihilation or wretchedness they risk an eternity of wretchedness whereupon as if the matter were not worth their trouble. They omit to consider whether this is one of those opinions which are accepted by the people with too ready credulity of one of those which, though obscure obscure in themselves, have a very solid though concealed foundation. Okay. So let me let me go over that little section. It's really cool. He says, "Hey, if if you start thinking, if you don't want to think about this inescapable jump to come in death, which begins eternity, whatever state it's in, uh, whether it's nothingness or a wretchedness that's potentially there to follow," he says, "the risk an eternity of wretchedness." Uh, you people in his day were looking at that like oh it's not really a big deal to think about they saw it as a trifle thing and he says they omit to consider whether this is one of those opinions which are accepted by the people with too ready credulity uh, or one of those which through obscure in themselves have a very solid though concealed foundation so he says, hey, I think you guys are pushing away something that's such vital importance away that has uh, such solid um, empirical evidence. You're pushing that away um, and you're thinking like, oh, it's smart to do so. And instead of understanding that, no, it's something of such empirical scientific evidence that you're going to die. And that is super solid then let's think about it and let's not push it to the right or to the left. He says, thus they do not know whether the fact is true or false, nor whether the proofs are strong or weak. The proofs lie before their eyes, but they refuse to look. And in this stage of ignorance, they choose to do everything necessary to fall into this calamity. If it exist to wait for death before testing the proofs while yet remaining highly satisfied in that state, professing it openly and indeed with pride, can we seriously think how important this matter is without being horrified at such extravagant behavior? Whoa. So Pascal says, man, like, I can't believe that you guys not only refuse to look into things and and study but then you you boast about it you boast and you become prideful right and you actually say that that's a good thing what you're doing and 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 Pascal says can we seriously think of how important this matter is without being horrified at such an extravagant behavior that you have meaning Meaning, man, in a sense, it's it's a horrific behavior to ignore something so vitally important. So, uh, when we see the, he's saying, when you see the weight of dying, 
the the um and that that's it the finality of it then it then it would be again rational to not be trifle not to think of it as a trifle thing not to think of it as a blase type of idea to think about eternity that to do so would be a horrifying behavior um and um so he says to settle down in such ignorance is a monstrous thing and those who spend their lives thus must be made to feel how extravagant and stupid it is by having it pointed out to them so that they are confounded by the sight of their own folly for this is how men mankind argue when they choose to live without knowing what they are and without seeking enlightenment i do not know they say so he sees people in his culture that say hey you know there's just a lot of agnosticism in his culture right not knowing right agnostic and um and so he sees that idea of the agnostic that's just like oh i just don't know oh we just don't know and that flippant kind of attitude so he's looking at that kind of uh, attitude in his culture and then that last little paragraph to settle down on such ignorance right is a monstrous thing he says man to to have that kind of uh whatever i don't know attitude he says and those who spend their lives that way must be made to feel how extravagant and stupid it is by having it pointed out to them so that they are confounded by the sight of their own folly right they spend their lives thus must be made to feel how extravagant and stupid it is by having it pointed out to them meaning someone has to point that out to them that hey don't live in that kind of ignorance that willful ignorance um, that's a folly way to go right and I think I did this for years and I'm, I'm sure other people do too right where you kind of just go I don't want to think about it I don't know you know, you might watch maybe, you know, you might take a few weeks and watch some YouTube clips and just be like, oh, you know, okay, I've watched enough YouTube clips on the subject and I really don't know. There's so many different opinions. You know, that's it. I'm done. I don't know what's going to happen. And and that's all your thought is. But if if something's that sure going to happen, shouldn't it take more than just some YouTube clips or watching someone do a lecture? to to really make up your mind and that's what he's getting at so he says for this is how men mankind argue when they choose to live without knowing what they are so they choose to live without knowing what they are and without seeking enlightenment so two things he's gonna hit on right knowing what we are and and then seeking something, right? So they, he says, they say, I don't know. That's a quote. So he says, you, I hear you guys say, I do not know, they say. And so, and then he goes on and he says, this is what troubles me. So we will talk about that next time on the Blaise Pascal um, time of reading. So, hey, it's been fun. You guys have a great day, okay? Take care. <laughs>